I love these small microphones. A lot of companies are making them and I couldn't be happier. I mean, it makes sense, right? Small, compact, can transmit good quality audio without any wires. So today we're gonna review the Comica Boom XD2 system. And the two is very important because this system has two transmitters. <laughs> All right, so Comica sent me these microphones to test, but I'm not obliged to say anything that isn't my own personal opinion. And to be honest, you guys are the judges because I'm gonna just show you everything that you could possibly get and expect with these microphones. So we can compare the Comica Boom XD2 to the very popular Rode Wireless Go, except for the fact that with the Comica, you get two transmitters for one receiver, unlike the Rode where you get one transmitter for one receiver. But I will do a full comparison between the Rode and the Comica next week. In this review, I'm gonna run through only the key items that I think are worth your attention, the value proposition, the build quality, key features, a sound test, and some cons, and timestamps for everything can be located here below and in the description. So starting with the value proposition, what do you get for what you pay for? Currently on Amazon UK, you can get the whole kit for £225, which is roughly $260. And for this, you get two transmitters, each with inbuilt microphones, one receiver, two lavalier mics, all the cables to connect to all the devices you ever need, two wind muffs for the inbuilt microphones, and a charging cable. Also, you get instructions and all of that stuff. And you also get a little key so that you can reset your devices if they ever freeze or something. I'm not really sure why they have that there, but... Eh. So when you think about it, this is actually a pretty good deal for what you pay for. You're pretty much ready to just go out and film and use them right out of the box. So yeah, these things are great, but are they even built to last? Is this even made of any good quality? So the transmitters and receivers are made of plastic. They are light and combined with their thin and small profile, they're not very intrusive. If you're making up talent or a bride, you really don't want to burden them with having a very heavy transmitter that they have to put in their back pocket or something. So this actually will give your clients and the people you're working with a nicer experience when it comes to having to be mic'd up. I'm not really sure how durable they are because they are made of plastic. I imagine if they were to drop from a decent height onto some hard floor, they will probably break. But at the same time, don't drop your equipment <laughs> also these clips are great as they can clip onto belts and t-shirts but also fit onto the cold shoe mount of a camera the lavalier mics also have a nice thick wire which i love because i don't want to be worried that the wire is gonna yank and break it, it seems like they're very built to last i'm very happy about this actually the pop filter has a nice rubber seal in it which means that they, it won't slip off and the pop filter is nice and thick which will hopefully stop any of the plosives that you get with your p's t k g it stops that. I will say that the design of the wind muffs for the inbuilt microphones are some of the best that I have seen from other microphones. They literally just slot in and because they're rubber, they don't come off easily. So yeah, build quality, pretty decent. And for what you pay for, that's kind of what you would expect. Starting with my absolute favorite and that is the locking lavalier cables. Each lavalier cable that comes with it has a locking feature. It's literally this little plastic thing, which means that won't actually come off as easily as if they didn't have this. You can probably tug this out and it'll, it'll come off. Yeah, there you go. It does add some more resistance if you were to pull the jack off. It won't completely keep it still. Like it's not a screw on like some other microphone manufacturers, but this does add a little bit more security. And the best thing about this is like you can actually take this and put it onto other lavalier mics if you decide to change them or if one breaks, for example. So I like the attention to detail that Comica put into that. This is key for me as I've had interviews where the talent would move and the lavalier mic just kind of popped off. Okay, so The next feature is the mono and stereo capabilities. As you can see on the power button, it has an M slash S feature. When you have the two transmitters, you can either mix them together into one mono soundtrack, or you can split them out into separate stereo soundtracks. And this is great because you can have one person on the left channel, one person on the right channel, and they will be both mono soundtracks, which means that if you're in an interview and somebody's speaking, you don't want to hear the other person breathing or saying anything, you can mute them, no problem. Also, you get a USB charging port, which is great because we're all moving to USB. USB-C anyway. And lastly, each transmitter has a mute button. So if your talent is going to the toilet, then 
you can just press this button and also if you're between breaks you can, you can actually mute it so it's not constantly transmitting audio so you're actually going to be saving some battery which is great and the last feature that i absolutely love is the fact that the receiver has a headphone jack now this is fantastic because i own the canon m50 and the canon m50 does not have a headphone jack so i can't monitor my audio so if you have a camera that doesn't have a headphone jack you can actually monitor your audio just from the receiver it also means that two people can monitor the audio for example with the sony a7 III, it has a headphone jack so i can connect my headphones and somebody else can connect their headphones to the receiver so it's a really great feature that they included in this so before we get to the cons i thought i'd do an audio test so this is what the comica boom sounds like this is an audio test one two three this is an audio test one two three i currently have the sony gain level two one and the gain level from the receiver two 12 decibels and just for your information this is what the audio can sound like after some editing in post-production. And I'll make a video how I did this. When it's done, it'll be up here. Okay, so this is the shotgun microphone that I use for all my videos. This is an audio test, one, two, three. This is an audio test, one, two, three. And now let's listen to the bass noise levels of the Comica Boom XD2. I'd like to let you know that also if you're using a shotgun microphone and the receiver, just like with the Rode Wireless Go, you're going to get some interference. If I actually turn the receiver on, what you can listen to right now is interference. And you get that with all of these wireless 2.4 gigahertz frequency sets. These may be cons for some people, but not for others. Regardless, the first one is battery life. The mics last only about four and a half hours. So if you're somebody that's doing very long interviews, shooting back to back or like a concert or something, that may be a little bit too short for you. And you may actually get worried. That being said, they do have USB charging. So you can actually charge these on the go and you can use them whilst they're being charged. And they do charge fairly quickly. So it's something that you can overcome. If you're shooting weddings, if you're just shooting social media videos, just straight up interviews then you should be all right with these four and a half hours another con is the range and the same thing with these small wireless microphones that they have a 2.4 gigahertz frequency which is basically a line of sight frequency you kind of have to always be facing the receiver as you can see in this clip i basically set up my camera to look down i left my building okay that's that's now filming me now so now i'm gonna go downstairs see you in a second Pandemic and that. Thing. Ah. Mom's up there. Wonder if she can hear me. ¿Me escuchas? Okay, so I think we dropped the signal. Okay, so yes and no. Okay, interesting. Good test. Going back up because it's cold. You really don't want to use these when there's a lot of things between you. So if you're shooting sports events or something on broadcast where there's a lot of people and a lot of things going on, this might not be the one for you. It really is for like where you have a line of sight as to who you're actually recording audio from. So that's it for the review. I'll let you judge whether this microphone actually suits you and you let me know in the comments below if it does, what you thought of this review. I personally think this is very good for social media creators, vloggers, those making YouTube videos, if you're teaching with a whiteboard but if you're a broadcast person if you're doing high-end commercials tv shows or videos like that you might want something a bit more rigid that has a stronger signal that you can really rely on and that's why you spend more money on higher end audio equipment so for me personally i know the limitations of these microphones and i'm happy with them for the kind of videos that i do and i always recommend when you get new camera gear to always test the limitations know its limits so that when you go out and make a video and do a project you're not exceeding these limitations and you're not gonna be surprised when you get home that the audio is not working or something happened just because you don't actually know what the limits were. But that being said, I hope that was useful. If it brought you some value, please give it a like because it helps me out. And if you're down there, make sure to subscribe to the channel to see more videos like these. And with all that being said,